In 213 BC, the Sicilian inventor Archimedes used the sun's energy to defeat a Roman fleet at the Greek city of Syracuse. Reportedly, he had his defender shields polished, reflecting and focusing the sun's light to ignite the attacking ship's sails. This was an early use of directed energy for defense. Today, the United States Air Force continues to explore the use of highly focused light, but from lasers, not the sun, to defeat an aggressor. High power lasers, high energy microwaves, and a variety of other speed of light directed energy weapons are emerging and may soon become commonplace. The Air Force's center of expertise for these space age technologies is the Directed Energy Directorate at Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico. The 900 person directorate is also developing the means to accurately aim and put this energy on target with surgical precision. The directorate is a major component of the Air Force Research Laboratory, the Department of Defense's largest laboratory, and the world's leader in military air and space research and technology. Headquartered near Dayton, Ohio, the laboratory has facilities and people throughout the United States. Working in A4L is the only place in the Air Force where you really get to work with cutting edge technology on a daily basis. Your projects are always changing, so you're getting to experience new technologies every day. Although the Directorate's work dates to the early 1950s, the emphasis then was on nuclear weapons research. Over the years, the emphasis moved from nuclear to directed energy. In the late 1970s and early 1980s, Directorate scientists developed a flying laser laboratory, a highly modified Boeing 707 aircraft. It was equipped with a laser capable of producing a concentrated beam of light powerful enough to shoot down missiles. Technology advances gained during that project are now being used in a second generation system called the Airborne Laser. It is designed to destroy attacking ballistic missiles during the early powered portion of their flight. This 21st century Warbird will carry a chemically operated oxygen iodine laser invented by directorate scientists. Coupled with a technology called adaptive optics, perfected by directorate researchers, it will effectively focus a beam of laser light hundreds of miles through turbulent atmosphere, destroying attacking ballistic missiles within seconds after being launched. Directorate scientists continue to improve chemical lasers, including a new all-gaseous version that offers significant improvements in laser utility, transportability, and maintainability. Experiments with chemical lasers aboard smaller aircraft are underway as well, but the wave of the future may be in solid state, diode, and fiber lasers. Using microelectronics to produce laser energy, Scientists helped develop a 25,000 watt solid state laser and are now working toward a 100,000 watt version that may be available within the next two years. This would be the first step in producing a laser small enough to fit aboard a fighter aircraft and used in a tactical battlefield. Solid state lasers could also be fitted aboard B-1 and B-2 bombers to defend against attacking anti-aircraft missiles. Fiber lasers gain energy as their light travels through a special medium in a thin, flexible, fiber optic-like tube. The longer the tube, the stronger the laser light as it exits the fiber. Compact, high-power laser weapons may soon become widespread as scientists combine and synchronize the light energies from multiple fibers. I work at the Air Force Research Laboratory in the Directed Energy Directorate. Uh, currently, uh, pursuing uh, research and development in fiber lasers, high power fiber lasers. It's a new technology field for the Air Force and we see a lot of potential here. Uh, there aren't too many people working in this career field so it's, it's pretty exciting work that we're kind of on the cutting edge, so to speak, of, of this technology. Producing laser light is only part of the solution. Work is ongoing to accurately focus and move that light to where it is needed. Large mirrors tens of feet across are under development. 
some to transfer energy from one point to another, and others to serve as the optics in immense space telescopes to gather precise images of far-off objects. Limited by the carrying capacity of present-day rocket technology, these mirrors would be made of ultra-thin, tinfoil-like materials that can be rolled or folded for compact storage, then expanded in space. Optically stabilized by laboratory-developed holographic techniques, these mammoth optics would be the equivalent of solid mirrors weighing hundreds of tons. Also underway are dual mirror systems that will be based in space or suspended from large, high-flying airships. They will be able to receive laser energy from ground systems, airborne or space-based lasers, then redirect that energy to targets around the world. While not directly involved in astronomy, the Directorate has two of the largest telescopes in the world, one in central New Mexico and the other in Maui, Hawaii. They are used to gather images of satellites passing quickly overhead and for advanced research to eliminate or reduce the distorting effects of the atmosphere so that clearer images can be taken. Directorate scientists perfected a system of lasers, computers, and specialized shape-changing mirrors that are now being incorporated in every major telescope observatory being constructed. This technology has revolutionized how astronomers view the heavens. Moving beyond lasers and optics, directorate scientists are working on high-power microwaves, developing equipment for transmitting those energies over distances. Within millionths of a second, microwave energy can easily disable or destroy an enemy's electronic equipment, rendering that equipment useless. Closely related to microwaves are millimeter waves that are being used in a system to turn away attacking enemy soldiers without causing permanent injury. A beam of millimeter wave energy traveling at the speed of light reaches a person heating the water molecules just beneath the skin and tricking a body into thinking the heat is much greater than it actually is. Without causing physical damage, a targeted individual is forced to flee. In the not too distant future, the technology will be installed on battlefield vehicles and tactical aircraft. That draws attention to a major responsibility, how to routinely move science from the laboratory to the soldier, sailor, or airman in the battlefield. The Directorate employs people whose jobs are just that, to transition promising technologies to the warfighters. It is doubtful that Archimedes could have dreamed of directed energies beyond reflected sunlight, but today's scientists are harnessing a variety of energies. Whether beams of light or high-power microwaves, the Air Force Research Laboratory's Directed Energy Directorate will continue to explore speed-of-light weaponry that offer the potential to more effectively defend the nation.